I think it's important to uh, point out that Fairphone also has uh, objectives that are not so much within circular economy, I would say. So when you talk about resources, we also very much look at uh, what are the social conditions. Uh, you know, those resources are taken from, from the ground and that's all our initiatives in mining. We need to think what are the next steps, right? And even though if we could say, okay, tomorrow we have a completely circular model, there would still be mining happening, right? Mm. So we have to kind of level both. Um, uh, what we've done with Surfing One, for instance, was uh, to make sure if we think of the market as a system and we say, okay, we are going to put in the market so many phones, mm. can we also take out uh, you know, so many phones from the system even before we put them into the market? And that's our project that we've done in Ghana with uh, recovering electronic waste uh, and shipping it back to Belgium to get recycled properly. Mm. Um, so that was a little bit with that thinking of, okay, we're putting you know, uh, thousands of, of devices uh, in the market. Mm. Let's take uh, actually three times the amount of devices yeah. we've put in the market, mm. we've taken out from, uh, from Ghana and we saved them from landfill. So are there any design principles from Circular that you think you apply in the development of the product? Mm. For us, it's really on longevity to start with. Uh, if you look at it, you know, half of the CO2 emissions are, are done in, in, the in the whole life cycle of a mobile phone come from manufacturing. So if you can delay that manufacturing again as much as possible, uh, uh, we think that's the uh, right approach for us. Um, at the same time, being a startup, I don't think we, we do use like, uh, very well thought through uh, design methods, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of ad hoc, uh, of course, a lot of we also plan and, and do our strategies. Um, but with, the, with that aim of, of bringing a product that, that can have a long, uh, long life, that can be repaired, that you know, also with the idea of giving that ownership back to consumers, you know, that they are responsible for, for what they buy and they don't feel like powerless when something breaks. Uh, I think that's uh, our line of thought. Yeah. Um, we also give them. Uh, we also give the people we're working with some some strange rules on not using some very specific materials, which we know uh, are troublesome in the supply chain at some point. Right. So we can give those non-orthodox rules, uh, even though all the other companies are basically used to uh, to doing things like that. Right. So, for example, we try to avoid using any coatings on the plastics. Uh, because we know, for example, in China, the production is uh, very harmful because they use a lot of volatile organic compounds mm. in the spraying system. Whereas in Europe, it's actually much better because they use waterborne systems. Mm. So we try to avoid as much as possible any coatings, any, any extra uh, uh, secondary operations on the parts we produce. Mm. Uh, we've seen in the last two years since we came into existence, a number of consumers are actually paid up front money for a product uh, that they've never seen uh, from a company that never existed, never did anything similar to that. I mean, it's tremendous. And now that we're, we're basically growing to a certain maturity level where we can actually show that we can bring products to market that can make a difference, hopefully, uh, we'll certainly uh, attract more customers.